Harold. That's right, that's right, Paddy, that, the Harold. A, a famous place. Yeah, so it's at the heart of the boys of Wexford. Yeah. yeah. And it's also close to Boulevard. Boulevard is on down the road, like half a mile. And historic yeah. ferns. And historic ferns, yeah. 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 <coughs> I was born in, in Gorey. Mm. What year? In 19, February 1928. And uh, when I was two years old, my mother and father went to, to live in Camorland. Camorland is uh, seven miles from Gorey. This side of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Small little village too. Yeah. And uh, so there's a great sense of history from where you were born and even where you're living now. Do you get a sense of '98? A sense of '98. Yeah. I was I was christened in in, in I was christened in St Michael's Church in Gorey. And there was an old priest that christened me, Canon Harper. I remember. If anyone remembers him. I remember, yes. Canon Harper. Mm -hmm. But uh, we went to Camorland then. My father died when I was only seven year old. And he was 35 years of age. And uh, <coughs> I said, there was no, there was no penicillin, no, no antibiotics or anything that time, and uh, which uh, he'd have been alive. Well, he wouldn't be alive today. He was born in 1899. But uh, such complaints it was was it was treatable today. He wouldn't have died. But my mother was left there with four of us to rear, and uh, my younger sister was ten months old. And uh, many of the time. I had to go and tin turnips with her and pick spuds and so on and so on. And I ten year old. And often when I snag and weed, the snow would be falling out of the heavens. Hey. The next day the guards would be at the door. Why wasn't Dick in school? It never occurred to him that Dick had to get a bit hate somewhere. Now this is talking straight about it. Yeah. Do you remember your grandfather? Uh, my grandfather, no. He, he didn't know about him. But Jimmy would also remember... I don't even remember what my father looked like, even though I was seven mm. and, I, and he died. Mm. Jimmy would also remember tinning turnips and oh, yeah. snagging bees and... I haven't done that for my day's work. <laughs> After your day's work? Yeah, my daughter helped me wife and a young lad. Yeah. Good man. Indeed. Well, Dick, you're, you're known as a singer and a harmonica player. Uh, which do you prefer? Uh, I like both of them, but uh, it's like the horse racing. Uh, I'd say to be a fourth finish between the two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I'd, I'd imagine to be a slight edge towards the harmonic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd prefer uh, Although when I'd be on my own, if I was up the garden at home now and I thought there'd be no one listening, I'd go through a, I'd go through a, a verse or two of a, a, a song. I never could manage the Shannon style though, as everyone knows. Mm. Uh, I tried I tried all my life to make the voices too heavy. Mm. But I could never get those little what would you call them, nuances into them. Uh, and and, and um, I love traditional music. I love listening to a Shannon singer. I love it. I have a man near me now living, and God, we, we, uh, there's great camaraderie there. Seamus Burke, mm. if you know him, and we often do chats about it. Mm. He used to have the little post office there in Bull Yeah. Very good. Uh, we'll get you to sing a song he's now really, later. He's, he, he's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a man called Paddy Berry, and, 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 and he's an idol of Seamus, he's the same Seamus Burke. Here's all Paddy Berry's books and records now. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll have a song from you now later, uh, mm -hmm. Richard. I'll just go back to Jimmy there for a minute. Uh, and Jimmy, uh, we'll ask, we'll ask uh, Richard to play a tune on the harmonica. 
and then we'll go back to the fiddle right. and maybe you show us a few little things about the little finger and stuff like okay, that. Okay, no problem. Richard, mm -hmm. uh, what would you like to play? And before you do play, <coughs> I remember Larry Adler, mm -hmm. when I was a young fella. He was a, he was a big hero of mine, but I believe he was your hero too. Ever since I was a little boy, Paddy, he, he, he was my hero. And uh, I collected every tape and every record, even going back to all 78s, to be collector's items now that I have. But uh, my lifelong ambition was to meet Larry in the flesh, as the saying is. And uh, seven months before he died, that was, uh, that was in 2000, August, or, uh, August September 2000. I had the pleasure of meeting him and having supper with him in Bournemouth. The International Harmonica Festival was there at the time and he was guest artist. The man was in a wheelchair at the time. He had several complaints, including the big C, we call it, cancer. But uh, that didn't deter him from getting up on the stage that night, being wheeled up in a wheelchair going, getting the microphone pulled over and he played as he did 50 years ago and uh, that was the thrill of my life then. Thank you. And how long were you playing the harmonica? I started off playing the harmonica when I was at, at about 12, 12 years old let's say. I was going to school in Kamal at the time and I played the tremolo that time as the cause is nowadays the diatonic. There's no flats and sharps in the, in the diatonic or the tremolo. If you come to a, a tune of like Kevin Barry, for instance, mm. you couldn't get that flat and sharp in it, mm. uh, which you can in this one that I have. Mm. Yeah. This one is tuned in the key of C. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that now because yeah. we want to compare both in, in a few minutes. Yeah. Um, how would you like to play, Richard? Uh, I'd like to play a, an air, slow air, and uh, it's called, um, oh, um, oh God, it is called, The Lament for Limerick, The Queen of Limney.
how the market yeah. started. Yeah. How the market. Very nice. Yeah. You like you like the harmonica. I can see it. Uh, there was two things that Larry told me that night. He says never try to imitate anyone, mm. and he says play from the heart. He says, and that will in turn will be projected to the if you play to an audience. Your love for the music. Learn all you can about the harmonica, but when you have that done, play the music and play it from here, you see. Yeah, exactly. Very good, very yeah. good. Now we're going back to Jimmy now, and Jimmy is going to uh, tell us start now again. We start the, the harmonica that you have there. Uh, is that an old instrument? Uh, it's quite new. I bought it in the square team in Chalkshubble. Uh, uh, it's a chromatic. And this particular one that I have, there's a, has a, has three octaves, has three octaves and a half. Now normally the ones I play, there's two holes less in it, it's a 12 hole one. But sometimes you'd be stuck, you'd be stuck below uh, the, the other side, the middle C, to get a, to get a note. And still using the high notes and you're able to go that, that bit extra. Mm -hmm. But uh, this particular one is tuned in the key of C. And uh, with the use of this slide here, I can get me half notes, flats and sharps, and you're not confined to the key then that's tuned in. With the use of that slide, you can play in any key. We practice. Is that a modern, is that very modern, that particular one you have there? Uh, well, the, the chromatic harmonic is out since about 1958. I'd be open to correction now on that, but uh, as far as I know, the, I remember Larry in his early days when he was when he was about 16 or 17. I saw photographs of him, and uh, he was playing the one called the Super Chromatica, and it was a 12-hole chroma uh, chromatic. But uh, he got he got especially doctored, inverted commas, for him. You couldn't buy one like that over the counter. He got, he had, a, he had his own engineer, and he, he done something with the reeds, at the harmonica, to sharpen them up and make them brighter and so on and so on. But uh, that's the chromatic harmonica. And there's a difference in that now to the, uh, to the, uh, is it the diatonic? The diatonic. Yeah, there is a difference. Yeah, the man I used to go, I travel Ireland with him, Lord of Mercy on him, he was the grandest fellow, he was from your, your country, Paddy, I think, down there. Phil Murphy, no, God be good to him. Mm. Phil played, uh, played uh, Phil, uh, he had, uh, he had, uh, he had uh, the tremolos, or the very tonic ones, and he had uh, a big hinge on him, so that he is C, D, C and D, and A, and G, and maybe if all on the one, and he had it was only a matter of turning the hole over with his hinge he had on it. I think he made it himself, his hinge part of it. He wasn't confined then, you see. If somebody was playing in a Kelly band, mm. and he it wasn't in the key that he'd, that he'd have, he just turned the hole over, and hopefully they'd be playing in that key. Mm. But he was a jingler. He was, he was the best tremolo player I, I ever heard. Yeah, he he was the father of John the John and John and Pips. And Pip, yeah. Yeah. Ah, yeah. And uh, he was the Larry Adler of the diatonic motor he, organ, was he? He was, and I tell you what, and I've a, a program for prove it now. I'm going to show it to you sometime. Just part of the cards. That particular family, as in as in a a, a magazine I get annually. I I got the magazine once. It's from a place in America. And it's a big, it's a big hardcover one. And when they get your name once, they send it to you conscientiously every year. But, but Phil Murphy and uh, and Pip and the brother, uh, they're in this, and and all the all the tunes 